As a parent in 1950s America, your biggest nightmare was your child coming down with polio disease. Right before your eyes, your neighbor's children were getting permanently paralyzed, their muscles emaciating until there was nothing left of them. Some died in their sleep, and even adults weren't spared. So when the news of a polio vaccine got to your ears, you sighed with relief. But in just 48 hours, 27 children would die or get paralyzed by the thing that was supposed to save them. What went wrong? How did the vaccine lead to one of the worst medical disasters in the history of America? In April 1955, a breakthrough in medicine was about to happen. It was revolutionary. The dreaded polio virus was about to meet its match in a vaccine developed by Cutter Laboratories. Cutter Laboratories at that time was a family-owned pharmaceutical company in Berkeley, California, founded by Edward Aaron Cutter in 1895. The company had grown and expanded over the decades. During World War II, it had huge government contracts for blood plasma and penicillin. By 1955, the Cutter Laboratories was one of the most deeply rooted pharmaceutical companies in the country, and it was about to deliver the people of America from the dreadful hands of the polio virus. The media was in a frenzy. Parents were ecstatic, and rightfully so. America had recorded over 57,000 cases of polio in 1952 alone that paralyzed 21,000 people and killed over 3,000 others. Between 1953 and 1954, over 70,000 people were infected. Polio survivors had to wear painful metal braces on their legs or be placed into iron lung respirators to breathe. There was no vaccine, no cure, and no hope. People were panicking, afraid to buy fruits at the grocery store or let their children play in public swimming pools. Some hospitals sprayed acid in the children's noses to block the virus but all it did was ruin their sense of smell. In his 2005 book, The Cutter Incident, How America's First Polio Vaccine Led to the Vaccine Crisis, Paul A. Offit wrote, a national poll found that polio was second only to the atomic bomb as the thing that Americans feared most. But the highly anticipated vaccine would only make matters worse. About a third of the children injected with the vaccine got infected with polio, several of them dying or getting paralyzed in the process. Months of frenzied development to find a polio vaccine finally paid off in early 1955. Hundreds of boxes marked polio vaccine rush, each containing thousands of tiny glass bottles filled with the much-awaited vaccine were packed and ready for delivery. Five drug companies, Eli Lilly, Park Davis, Weinth, Pittman Moore, and Cutter Laboratories had started the mass production of this vaccine just a year earlier. The man to thank for this was Jonas Salk, who had successfully developed a procedure through which the polio virus was killed with formaldehyde, effectively creating an antidote. Salk had earlier tested the vaccine on himself, his wife, and their three children. On April 26, 1954, the vaccine proceeded to the field study stage. Randy Kerr, a six-year-old second grader from Falls Church, Virginia, was the first to be injected with the vaccine in the cafeteria of the Franklin Sherman Elementary School in McLean. The study revealed that children who did not get the vaccine were three times more likely to be paralyzed with polio than those who did. When the study results were later revealed on April 12, 1955, it was nothing short of a miracle, and everybody wanted a jab for their children. The media got word of the vaccine and were breathless with excitement. The news made front page headlines all over the country. On August 30th, 1954, Bernice E. Eddy, a veteran scientist at the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, made a shocking discovery about the vaccines developed in Cutter Laboratory. The vaccines designed to protect against polio had instead infected one of the test monkeys with polio. There could only be one explanation. The vaccine contained the live, infectious polio virus. A disaster was brewing, Eddie warned. But when you are the American government in the 1950s, and a field trial of a vaccine reveals that it was 80-90% to 90 effective in protecting against polio, and your people are anxiously awaiting this savior, what do you do? You ignore the warnings and grant a license for mass production of the vaccine. By April 1955, the vaccine hit the markets. 
To reward its employees for their hard work in the last few months of feverish production, Cutter Laboratories cleared the company cafeteria, brought in nurses, and gave the vaccine to the children of 450 employees, Offit wrote. Despite Eddie's warnings, 380,000 doses of the vaccine were administered over the next two weeks. On April 27, 1955, the Epidemic Intelligence Service determined that the 120,000 doses of vaccine administered by Cutter Laboratories contained live polio virus. Immediately, the United States Surgeon General, Leonard Scheele, issued a recall for all Cutter vaccines. At 10.38 a.m. on the same day, Cutter Laboratories in Berkeley, California, sent a telegram to health departments and drugstores across West and Midwest America saying, Urgent! No further injections of Cutter polio vaccine are to be made. Immediately advise your physicians. But the damage had already been done. About 40,000 children injected with the Cutter vaccine came down with abortive or short-lived polio. They experienced fever, sore throat, headache, vomiting, and muscle pain. According to Offit, within 48 hours of the recall, Cutter's vaccine had paralyzed or killed 25 children, 14 in California, 7 in Idaho, 2 in Washington, 1 in Illinois, and 1 in Colorado. A situation that should have been the best event in the decade had turned into this horrific nightmare. Everyone panicked. Offit wrote, It was one of the worst biological disasters in American history. It exploded the myth of the invulnerability of science and destroyed faith in the vaccine enterprise. Somewhere between Salk's laboratory and the syringes filled with the polio vaccine, something had gone wrong. But what was it? The polio vaccine was not Jonas Salk's first rodeo. Since 1941, he had been elbow deep in the search for influenza vaccines. After confirming that there were three strains of polio virus, Salk set out to develop a vaccine by inactivating all three types of the virus with formaldehyde. His inactivation procedure involved nine days of formaldehyde treatment, which would, in effect, kill the active virus. The problem with this procedure, according to Sven Gard, a virologist at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, was that in reality, at least 12 weeks of formaldehyde treatment was required for the active virus to become wholly inactivated. But the demand for the polio vaccine was too high. Children were dying. Even President Franklin D. Roosevelt had been paralyzed from the waist down due to a polio infection when he was 39. By February 1954, Salk had a 55-page protocol for developing a polio vaccine. Salk knew the risks involved with his procedure, but he believed that the manufacturing companies would follow his protocol as he intended and take the same precautions he had taken. He was wrong. The manufacturing companies cut down his 55-page vaccine production protocol to just five pages. On April 12, 1955, government officials gathered in a conference room to make a decision should licenses be granted for mass production of Salk's vaccine. The officials, including representatives of the Laboratory of Biologics Control Commission, quickly sifted through 2,000 pages of complex information regarding the vaccine. In less than three hours, they decided and concluded the meeting. That same day, the U.S. government granted five companies the license to produce the polio vaccine. It turned out to be one of the worst decisions the government ever made, and in a few months, first and second graders and their families would pay dearly for it. Towards the end of April 1955, it had become clear that the vaccine was harmful. The doses were recalled, but 380,000 children had already been injected with it. In total, 220,000 children were infected with the potent polio virus from the vaccine, with 164 children severely paralyzed and 10 killed. It did not stop there. The failed vaccine unlocked a chain of transmission that led to a polio epidemic worse than America had ever seen. The manufacturing companies had used the Mahoney strain of the virus to produce the vaccines because it is the most dangerous, so when inactivated, it created the most antibodies after tests. This would have been a brilliant way to ensure the efficiency of the vaccine, but it became a serious problem once the vaccine failed. We now had thousands of children infected with the most potent strain of the already deadly polio virus. It explains why the results were so catastrophic. Cutter Laboratories had been negligent in so many ways. 
Because the vaccines were so desperately needed, they cut corners to haste the production process. The company almost completely ignored the protocol Salk had written regarding the manufacture of the vaccine. When other specialists like Eddie raised the alarm, Cutter conveniently failed to inform the officials in charge of licensing the vaccine of these concerns. Between 1955 and 1957, Cutter Laboratories was sued for negligence and breach of implied warranty in about 60 court cases, with a total of 12 million in plaintiff claims. The company managed to avoid liability because the government was mostly to blame for the disaster. In the case of Gottsdanker v. Cutter Laboratories, the court ruled that Cutter was not negligent because most of the other companies producing the vaccine also had problems in activating the virus. Also, the company had followed the protocols approved by the government, even though the protocols themselves were faulty. No one took the blame for the Cutter incident. Many officials were fired, and Cutter got all the bad publicity, but Cutter settled its cases with just 3 million, of which 2 million was covered by the company's insurance. The government began to issue more rigorous regulations for all vaccines after the Cutter incident. By 1962, 400 million doses of safe polio vaccine were administered, and the cases of polio in the US reduced significantly. Today, not many people remember the horror of the 1950s Cutter polio vaccine disaster, but for the people who were affected either directly or indirectly, the memories still linger.